Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today. Today, we are going to talk about Stash. So particularly, we are introducing two new add-ons for Stash. Uh, it's NATS and HCD. So as you may know, Stash is a Kubernetes operator for backup and recovery. So you can take backup of any kind of data, uh, uh, including databases using Stash. So Stash has a uh, plugin system through which you, we can add support for additional, additional applications so that it's not just a volume backup, but it is an actually application consistent application hour backup. So recently we have added support for uh, NATS and HCD. So today we're going to demonstrate those and talk about this. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to say, uh, you know, share the floor with uh, Hussein Mahmood and Piyush Kantidash. During the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in our Zoom chat. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, we're going to read through those questions and try to answer them. Thank you. With that, uh, Saim, uh, you can start. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm Hossein Mahmoud, software engineer from AppScode. Um, Piyush Kanti Dash is also here. He is another software engineer of AppScode. Today, we are going to introduce NATS and XCD add-ons for Stash. So here is the table of contents for today's webinar. First, I will give a brief introduction about Stash. Then we are going to show demos for NATS and XCD add-ons. I'm going to demonstrate the NATS add-on with a demo. And after that, Piyush will demonstrate the XCD add-on. If you have any question, you can ask in the Zoom chat. We will try to answer them at the final part of this webinar. Okay, now let's get started with Stash introduction. So what is Stash? Stash is a cloud native data backup and recovery tool for Kubernetes. Using Stash, you can backup Kubernetes workloads, volumes, and databases. Okay, uh, Stash integrates with, uh, C uh, integrates with the Kubernetes CSI driver that provides CSI snapshots. In Kubernetes, you have to create a snapshot for each PVC. So if your application has multiple volumes, you have to create multiple snapshots. Stash automates these things. You just need to target the workload in Stash. It will automatically take backup of all the volumes for the workload. Stash also uses RESTIC under the hood, so it can deduplicate your backup data. Um, so deduplication means Stash will only upload the data that is new to the previous backed up data. So it will not upload the whole data again. So it saves a significant amount of network traffic. And Stash also comes with a built-in Prometheus monitoring system. Okay, here are the supported applications. So what can you back up with Stash? You can back up your Kubernetes volume, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Redis databases, and many more. So these are the supported platforms. You can deploy Stash in any Kubernetes cluster like GKE, Amazon EKS, Rancher, etc. So these are our supported storages. You can store your backup data in any S3 compatible storage, Google Cloud storage, Microsoft Azure storage, etc. You can also store your backup data in a network file system or NFS. Okay. Now, um, Stash uh, supports extending its functionality through add-ons. Uh, NATS add-on enables Stash to backup and restore NATS streams. So let's take a look at some of its features. Uh, basically, you can backup single or multiple streams. Uh, it has different authentication method support that is provided by NATS. It has also the TLS support. So how can you uh, install Stash? Uh, here are the commands to install Stash using Helm. Okay, so let's start our demo with uh, deploying the NATS with Helm. So here are the commands to deploy NATS. Um, you can see I have enabled the cluster here and provided the replicas three. So there should be three NATS server running in the cluster. And I have also enabled the authentication and I'm using the basic authentication. That's why I have provided the username and password. Okay, so let's uh, deploy it. Okay, uh, here is my environment. Uh, uh, on the right side, I'm watching for some resources. 
related to backup and restore. And on the left side, I am I will run my commands. So uh, I am using Kubernetes version of 1.21.1. So let's check it. Okay, uh, Stash is also installed on my machine. So let's check the version. So the version is 2021.10.11. Okay, now let's deploy, let's. So the NATS cluster has been deployed. So there should be three NAT server running. So let's wait for the server to be ready. So let me show you the service for the NATS cluster. So the service is sample NATS. So I'm just going to put forward this service so that I can interact with the NATS server. So the put forward is done, okay. There should be another server. Okay, uh, let's check the maps stream first. I have provided the uh, username and password for the basic authentication. So you can see uh, no streams defined. So there are no streams here. So let's create a stream. The stream name is S1. So S1 stream has been created. Let's create another stream. Let's name it S2. So S2 has been created. Now let's check the stream list. So there are two streams available. Now let's publish some messages into our stream. So a message has been published to stream as on. Now let's publish another message. Okay, another. Okay, now let's get the details of stream as on. Uh, you can see there are three messages. Okay, and now let's prepare for the backup. Okay, first I will tell you how the NATS backup works. This is the backup flow. So a user first creates a storage secret. This storage secret contains the uh, access credential for the uh, cloud storage. And then a uh, user uh, creates a repository. This repository points this storage secret and this repository will contain the uh, storage information that is in the cloud. Then the user creates a backup configuration. This backup configuration basically specifies a schedule and a target uh, to take the backup. So the stash operator watches for backup uh, configuration resources. If it finds one, then uh, it creates a cron job according to the schedule. And this cron job uh, creates a backup session according to the backup configuration and Stash also watches for the backup session object. When it finds a backup session, it gets uh, the corresponding uh, NATS backup uh, 2.4.0, which is our add-on. So it resolves the add-on and it creates a backup job according to the add-on. Then uh, the backup job gets the connection information from the binding object. This binding object basically uh, contains the connection information and the secret uh, to connect with the NAT server. So uh, the backup job uh, connect with the NAT server and get the streams and store them into a temporary volume. So finally, the backup job sends this data into the storage backend. Okay, this is uh, how the NATS backup works. Now let's uh, create 
a secret. This is our uh, EML resource, EML sample for the secret. Um, here I have provided the username and password in base64 encoded format. So this secret will be used by Stash uh, to, connect, to authenticate with the net server. Okay, then we are going to create an app binding. As I have said earlier, this app binding contains the connection information to connect with the application. So here I have provided the service name, sample nets, and the port number 4222, and the secret uh, that I have just showed you, which is sample nets auth. So let's create these resources. So the secret has been created. Now let's create the app binding. Okay, the app binding is also created. Now let's prepare our backend. To prepare our backend, we have to create a, a storage secret first. So this will contain the access credential for our cloud storage. Then we will create a repository, and this repository will uh, contain the information of the backend. So we are going to use Google Cloud Storage. So that's why we have provided the bucket name here and the prefix. The prefix specifies the directory inside that bucket where the backup data will be stored. And I have I have uh, provided the storage secret name, which is GCS secret. Here I have just provided the storage secret name. So let's create these resources. So, okay. So the GCS secret has been created. Now uh, let's, okay. Now let's create the repository. Sorry. So the repository has been created. Now let me show you the Google Cloud storage. So this is our storage, and as you can see, right now there is no uh, data here, so it's empty. So after the backup, the snapshot should be here. Okay. Okay, now this is our backup configuration object. I have uh, already told about it. So here, uh, this is, here we are providing the add-on name, which is Nats Backup 2.6.1. And here I am providing the repository name. And in the target section, we are providing the app binding, uh, which is sample Nats. So the target section specifies the application. And here is the interim volume template uh, where the data will be temporarily stored. And here is the retention policy. I am using a key plus five, which means that uh, the, yeah, we will always keep the last five snapshots. So I have provided the schedule five minutes. So the backup will be taking, taking place in every five minutes. So let's create this backup configuration. So the backup configuration has been created. Uh, so it, it will create a backup session in every five minutes, but we can uh, trigger a backup session anytime. Okay. Uh, so a backup uh, cron job has been created already. Okay. So let's trigger a backup session. So you can see our, the backup session has been created and uh, I want to pause the backup configuration so it will not take any further backup. 
Okay, the backup configuration has been paused. Now let's wait for the backup session to be completed. It's in the running phase now. Okay, so the phase is succeeded, which means our backup is completed. Now, let me show you the Google Cloud Storage. You can see the directory is here. So here is our snapshots. So our backup is successful. Now let's uh, simulate a disaster scenario before restoring our data. So to simulate a disaster scenario, uh, I've, I'm going to remove all the streams. So this is the S2 stream. So it has been removed and now the S1 stream is also removed. So let's check the stream list. So you can see all the streams have been removed. Now let's restore our data. So uh, first, I will uh, tell you how Nets Restore work. Uh, user creates a restore session first, and stash operator watches for the restore session. When it finds a restore session, it resolves the restore add-on and uh, creates a restore job. This restore job gets the connection information from the app binding and gets the uh, uh, backend information from the repository. So using the repository, it connects with the backend and gets the uh, backup data and stored them into a temporary volume. Then uh, using the app binding, it connects with the net server and insert the data into the net server. So this is how the restore works for nets. Okay, so this is our uh, YAML sample for the restore session. Um, similarly, we have uh, provided the a task name, which is our add-on, and provided the repository, which is GC, GCS repo. And here is the target where I have provided the app binding, which is sample nets. And again, uh, we are providing the interim volume template. And uh, this will be used by Stash to store the data temporarily before injecting into the net server. And here is the rules. Uh, so, uh, we are providing snapshot latest, which basically means we, we, we are going to restore the last backup data. Okay, now let's create this restore session object. You can see the restore session has been created and it's in the running phase. Let's wait for it to complete it. Okay, the restore is succeeded. Now let's list all the streams. Okay, the streams are back. Now let's get the details of the stream S1. So there are three messages here. So our register is successful. Now the, that was all from my side. I am going to hand over the presentation to Piyush uh, Kantidash. Uh, he will cover the FCD add-on part. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to stop the share. Thank you, Hussain, for giving me the opportunity. Hello, everyone. This is Piyush. I'm a software engineer at AppScot. Let's get started with the ITC add-on. I will demonstrate how to take backup and restore ITC database using stash ITC add-on. Let's have a look at the features of the ITC add-on. It can take backup of the ITC database and restore it. It supports HCD database with basic authentication enabled. It supports TLS enabled 
it's your databases as well. At first, I'm going to deploy a an it city cluster to deploy an it city cluster i will be using a stateful set and a service this cluster will consist of three nodes here are the emls i am going to apply now so we can see that uh, here we have mentioned the client port and pr port and the uh, necessary things for deploying an it city cluster let's go to the terminal Here I am watching some resources on the right side terminals. Uh, at the first, uh, at, the, at the top right corner, I am watching for pod resources, and rest of rest of the resources are stash specific resources. Uh, and, uh, here I am watching for repositories, and backup. Uh, here I am watching for backup configuration, backup session, and resource session. I am going to deploy the etcd cluster now. I will enable basic authentication in the cluster and insert some sample data going forward. Let's deploy the ETC cluster. Here you can see that a service and a stateful set has been created. And in the right side, the ETC database ports are being created. Um, the database ports are ready now. Let's exit into a database port and enable basic authentication and insert some sample data. Now I am adding a user named root and using a password for the user. The user root has been created. I will grant root rule for to the user root. Root rule has access to all the keys in an HCD database by default. The root rule has been granted. Now we are enabling the basic authentication. Okay. For convenience, I am exporting the username and password to the environment variable. Let's create some keys in our HCD database. We have created three keys. To verify that the data has been inserted successfully, I am querying for all the keys in the cluster with the prefix foo. We can see that three key has been created, foo, foo two, and foo three. Let's exit from the database. Now come to the backup part. Let me explain how it's the backup works in Stash. User creates a storage secret and a repository CRD. The storage secret CRD contains the credential of backend storage. Here, for example, for our case, the secret will hold the credential for our Google Cloud storage. The repository CRD contains the bucket information like the directory location where the backup data will be stored the and the secrets uh, storage secret name etc the backup uh, then user have to uh, has to create a backup configuration the backup configuration specifies information regarding the target of the backup the schedule of the backup retention policy etc the stash operator will watch for the backup configuration and uh, once it gets a backup configuration, it will create a cron job in the specified schedule in the uh, backup configuration CRD. The cron job will create in the uh, a backup session in the schedule time and stash operator will be looking for the backup session. 
once it gets a backup session, the session operator will create, will resolve the task, uh, here the etcd backup task and the function and create a job. The job will connect to the etcd database through a app binding. The app binding will hold the information of uh, the service port, the service, service port and the secret storage, uh, the secret of the database to for connecting with the database and after the after that the job will save the snapshot and upload the snapshot in the backend repository so like a backend storage here uh, i will be using google cloud as our backend storage uh, we i will be creating a secret the secret will hold its some metadata like its name and our username and password we have just created for connecting with the etcd database we will also uh, create an app binding the app binding will contain the information regarding necessary for connecting with the database like the service port and the storage secret uh, then secret name for connecting uh, that holds the authentication information for the database. We have to, uh, let's apply the secret and the app binding. The etcd basic auth secret has been created. And the app binding, named etcd app binding, has been also created. OK. For connecting with the cloud, we need our cloud authentication. The storage secret will contain the cloud authentication information. We have to specify our, uh, in our case, we have to specify our Google Cloud authentication information. And we have to create a repository. The repository will contain the, our bucket name, the directory where we, have, we, we are going to our, store our backup and the storage secret name. Let's create the storage secret and the repository. The story secret and this is secret has been created and the repository named this is repo has been created as we are watching watching for repository resources here we can see that a repository has been created just now now come to backup configuration in order to take backup, we need to create a backup configuration custom resource. The backup configuration tells stash about the schedule, target, task, the location of the backup storage, etc. In the retention policy, we will specify the last, uh, we, uh, how many snapshots we want to create. Uh, here we can see that it mentioned as uh, schedule. It, uh, it tells that we will take backup in every five minutes. Here we have specified the task name, the repository name, and the app binding name. In the retention policy section, we have we are specifying that we will take backup, we will uh, store only the last five snapshot in the in our cloud backend. Let's create the backup configuration. The backup configuration has been created. We can see that a backup configuration has been created and it has a schedule for every five minutes. So if uh, a backup session will be created within five minutes and we can verify that a con cron job has been created. The backup configuration has created a cron job and it is scheduled for 
to take backup in every five minutes. So we can see that our cron job has triggered a backup session. Here, a backup session has been triggered and it, it is in running phase and a backup job is running. In the repositories CRDs, we can take that, uh, we can see that a snapshot has been backed up and our restore session has also been succeeded. We can verify that in our Google Cloud that a backup, initially it was like this. If we refresh it, we can see that a directory has been created named its city and it has take a snapshot. Okay. Let's come to the restore part. Stash will automatically trigger backup in every five minutes. We have taken a snapshot already. For that, we will pause the backup configuration for now. We can see here that the backup configuration has been paused and the cron job should be paused also. Here the cron job has been suspended. Let's simulate a disaster in our each database. For that, we are executing our each series report. Sorry. I will delete all the keys we have installed previously. Let's verify that the data has been deleted. Here you can see that the output is nil. We can confirm that the there is no prefix here in our database with prefix foo. Okay. Now see the how it's the register works. User has to create a restore session to take the restore. The restore session contains necessary information for restoring the city cluster. The stash operator watches for a restore session and it creates a restore job once it gets a restore session. In the meantime, the stash operator will, will resolve the function and task by specifying its city restore 5.0 and the the job will connect to the to the database with the app binding the app binding holds the information to connect with the database this job will download the snapshot we have we have uh, taken backup and it will restore into the etc database the job uh, gets the cloud information authentication information to repository and repository uh, uh, has mentioned the storage secret to get authenticated to the cloud. Here is the EML of our resource session. The resource session EML contains the task name for restoring its city and some parameters 
that uh, that are necessary for restoring our each city database a repository name from where we have to take backup we have to uh, restore the data and the app binding name here we are specifying that we will restore the each city database from the latest uh, latest snapshot let's see how each city add-on works The HCD add-on create some restore ports with the respective volumes mounted from the original database ports and it downloads the backup snapshot from the cloud bucket and uh, after that it restores the downloaded data in a temporary directory. The directory will hold the back, uh, backup data now and, and the, scale, uh, the restore job will scale down the specified workload in the in our case the it's database the it's job so, so stress restore job will replace the old data with the restored data and finally it will scale up the workload let's apply the restore session A research session has been created. We can see that some research ports are being created here. And the research job is now scaling down the original workload. In the meantime, it will restore the data from the cloud. The test issue job is scaling up the original workload. Here we are getting the restore session. It is in running phase. The restore job is getting its work done. The restored job. The restore session is succeeded and our restore job is completed as well. Okay. Uh, let's verify that if our key has been restored successfully, let's exit into the database port again. We are getting all the key of our database with prefix foo. We can see that the previous key and value are restored. That's all from my site. We can answer if any queries, if you have now. Uh, thank you, Piyush. Uh, thanks for uh, also Saim earlier. So giving us a demo of uh, NATS and HCD backup. With that, uh, we are open for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write in the chat or you can also unmute yourself. If you would unmute yourself and ask a question for Zoom. Sounds like uh, everybody had a great uh, view, overview of the backup process today. No questions. Uh, 
uh, thanks, Alan Jenner. Uh, yeah, for your uh, compliment. Uh, yeah, just to add to the presentation, I would uh, just add one thing: is that uh, Nostash has a uh, also, you know, has a it can be aware of the application version. So, like today, we uh, use sort of the latest version of HCD and NAT. But uh, you know, let's say we are also have support for Postgres, MySQL, uh, MariaDB, uh, Radish. So in those cases, for older version of the databases, uh, uh, we can uh, we support a specific version of the add-ons for that data, particular database version. So you will be able to kind of take uh, you know backup for any of the supported version of the databases, um, and it's typically supported for uh, all recent versions that has been released. So with that, uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you can email us at support at appscode.com or you can visit our website, uh, stash.run or follow us on Twitter. Uh, so thank you all for joining today uh, and uh, we'll see you next time uh, with our next webinar in two weeks. Thanks, bye.